Hello and welcome back to the Niagara Particle Variety Show. Today we're going to be looking at a very handy tool called the Niagara Parameter Collection. Now you might think that sounds really similar to Material Parameter Collection. Well, you are correct. It is very similar. In fact, it actually piggybacks off of the Material Parameter Collection setup. Blah, 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 blah. So, how do we create a Niagara Parameter Collection? Well, you're going to right click, you're going to go to FX. You're going to go to Niagara Parameter Collection. Uh, let's call this tutorial NPC thing. NPC, not to be confused with MPC, is a Niagara Parameter Collection. So if we go and double click on it, you can see that we have this source material collection. Now this is there if you're already using a material parameter collection. So if we go to my MPC environment weather thingo, which is where all of my weather and time variables are stored in Prismatica. This is now mirroring that entire collection. So this won't happen in editor, unfortunately, but at runtime, anytime the material parameter gets changed, it will propagate those changes to the Niagara parameter collection. So just keep in mind, this doesn't happen in the editor. So, you know, if you change your time of day without explicitly setting it again on the Niagara parameter collection, you won't see any changes in your scene, but at runtime, it will it will work. So that's just a note. So let's go to a new Niagara system. We're going to create an empty system. And this one's called, I don't know, we'll call it Fireflies or something. And then we are going to right click, add an emitter. Uh, let's just go like the, the hanging particles, default particles thing. And we will just make these really bright. So on initialize, color let's just make them red just for for fun let's go 200 brightness just for just for fun cool so these are gonna be really visible now what we are gonna do is down the bottom here in our variables list we are gonna go niagara parameter collection we're gonna click this and we can go to common and look for the one that we just made so tutorial npc thing 001 and we are going to let's get the fog opacity value so we're going to grab our fog opacity and then in the spawn rate we're going to go spawn rate and we're going to choose multiply float so this is just any float multiplied by another float so number a number a is going to be the fog opacity we can drag that up into there alternatively you can just search it if you've got it you know enabled so we can go param collection blah 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 fog opacity and then we're going to multiply that by i don't know 200 or something so when our fog reaches opacity one we're then going to be spawning 200 particles per second let's put this in the world in this random little blueprint here at begin play i'm setting on the material parameter collection the fog to be zero and then after a delay of three seconds we are going to set again on the material parameter collection the fog opacity to one and then you know what after three more seconds we'll just set it back to to zero and so this will prove to us that it is automatically kind of getting mirrored in the niagara parameter collection so three seconds it's foggy now our firefly things start spawning and then it's no longer foggy and they they will have stopped spawning by this point so there you go there's a little example of you know the, the fact that it uh that it propagates properly now if you are comfortable with writing like h hlsl um you can do like custom math with you know these values by doing a new expression uh, or actually we could do that in here um, expression blah 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 and if you right click on the variable you can just copy reference to it and you know use uh npc dot tutorial npc thing blah blah dot fog opacity i don't know multiplied by bracket i don't know five minus ten uh, uh i don't know you can just do math uh, in this way for kind of more complex things. Maybe you want like an offset so that it doesn't start spawning until, you know, it's past 0 0.5 and then past that point, you want it to start spawning as though it was from zero to one. So 
you can do some math in there. Alternatively, you could use like a, a custom module that does math for you. But anyway, the option is there. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the material that's being used on the particles can also read from a material parameter collection. So if we have a uh, new material six here uh, and we just go collection parameter and let's get our weather and we'll just get our fog opacity thingo we can say i don't know lerp between blue and red based on the you know the fog opacity so and in here let's just go from zero to i don't know 0 0.5 to one for example so this is set at zero then it's going to 0 0.5 five where it will start spawning them uh, and then it's going to go to you know one and they'll be completely different color and and whatnot so this is just an example of using these parameters in the material of the particle as well as the actual you know logic of the particles another really handy example of you know using these uh these global variables is for things like wind and you know the direction and strength of the wind so if we go into our, you know, Fireflies example, let's just grab Niagara Parameter Collection. We'll go to our test NPC thingo. We'll get our wind intensity. We're going to put that in the wind. Well, actually the wind speed scale will be a, a float multiplied by float, wind intensity, and then we can kind of adjust it, you know, so it's it's uh, scaled to whatever looks good. Um, I'm, all, I'm not going to worry about the direction just because in my game, the the direction is always towards zero uh, like zero zero so in this example let's just start we'll, we'll kind of do the fog as well but let's also just change the wind value to be zero and then we'll change the wind value to be like two or something uh, and then we'll just change the wind value to be something extreme like uh, 10 just for fun so if we hit play you'll see nothing happening then we change the value and the materials update and the wind, you know, on the particles has been updated. Then when it's, you know, really extreme, the, you know, the, the wind of the particles is being affected in conjunction with the, the materials wind effect. So that is the Niagara parameter collection. Essentially, it is the exact same as a material parameter collection but it can be read by Niagara particles. And I think the biggest takeaway is that they do get automatically updated if they are referencing a material parameter collection. If they aren't referencing a material parameter collection, it's just the same as updating one of these. You would just say, uh, get Niagara parameter collection. So you have to get it first in this case. So we can go get hello world, this is me. Uh, then we can set uh, in or float parameter, you know, the name, blah, 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 set the value. So if it's not mirroring an MPC, this is how you would change values in it. But 99% of the time, you're going to want it to mirror a material parameter collection. So that's it for the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, then you are legally obliged to like and subscribe to the channel. If you do want to ask any questions about this, you can jump in our Discord, which is also linked below. And if you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in the description, Patreon, uh, um, I'm lost. So with that being said, we say goodbye. Goodbye.